So those warriors that put themselves in the face of that evil enemy and mm -hmm. anybody who would take away our individual rights and our individual freedoms, they're the enemy. They need to be killed. If you want to see the real crooks, you know, the real pros, you just turn on the fucking TV. We've been heroes of horrors, a nation of horrors. Wall Street, Washington, they'd be looking for the nearest gun to swallow. You, you can't stop. You can't climb out. No left turns, no right turns. It's just a circle and everybody gets their, their cut. I can't tell you the last thing that I saw that was completely clean. And I'll be honest, I don't envy many things. I envy Ted Nugent being such good friends with him. Ted, you've got the floor, my friend. You've got the floor. Thank you for coming on TedNugent.com. I know you're about to go on your uh, Black Power tour, and um, but we appreciate you giving us time today. Sir, you've got the floor. Well, Alex, thank you for that. I appreciate it. But a salute back at you because uh, there's no question that the great American legend and icon, uh, a, a true warrior, a true hero, Charlton Heston, deserves nothing but respect from thinking, caring, conscientious, educated people. But again, as we talked before about uh, the gift from God that Pierce Morgan represents, I mean, God literally sent Pierce Morgan from England to try to debate the Second Amendment. So <laughs> you, you literally couldn't come up with Alfred E. Newman versus uh, an audition for One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. <laughs> of a guy who hates freedom and hates the Second Amendment and hates Ted Nugent Alex Zones and hates the NRA and hates self-defense and hates guns. And I think um, we are not here so much to defend child Heston because, once again, God has sent a complete brain-dead soulless punk to desecrate the absolutely well-earned and deserved glowing reputation of the great child Heston. And what Jim Carrey has done, and I've been all over, we have a talk back at tednugent.com, and we have thousands of people from all around the world that come to celebrate self-evident truth and common sense. You know, the same communication that you get, Alex, from people who understand, you know, history, the evidence that brought us to the greatest experience and the greatest quality of life in America. And when a guy like Jim Carrey um, pulls off this kind of, mean-spirited souls. I think the best word to describe Jim Carrey and, and Pierce Morgan and, and guys like, you know, Michael, I'm still looking for personal hygiene more. They're all one big gaggle of soulless punks. And, and I would understand, and I understand when a person is uneducated and ignorant and hates America and hates self-defense and doesn't believe in self-defense, but then again, if you examine Michael Moore and his armed security detail, if you examine uh, uh, Jim Carrey and his armed security detail, when you examine Michael Bloomberg and Governor Cuomo and Nancy, you don't have to read this, you need to sign it, Pelosi, and of course our favorite gun runner, Eric Holder, when you examine the freedom haters who hate guns and want to do everything on film, stating clearly they would take away all the guns if they could. These people are perfect to represent the other side because when they open their mouth, yes, we have an, un, uh, an unfortunate and a, and, a, and a tragic percentage of Americans who are more like sheep than we the people that support these uh, freedom haters. When they speak, common sense America, people who have jobs, people who put their heart and soul into being the best that they can be, people who appreciate the gift of life, the sacred gift of life, and our moral, intellectual, and spiritual obligation to defend that life, and that the Second Amendment was written down to remind us we have the individual God-given right to defend that precious gift of life. Good people understand the pure rot from Jim Carrey. So, in his grave, Alex, let, let's really examine this. From the grave, the great Charles Heston represents bait to the Jim Carreys of the world, and, and I think Charles Heston, if we could communicate with him, he would be smiling right now. He wouldn't be hurt. He 
would be smiling because Charles Heston knew the culture war was coming before any of us did, Alex. No, he was there sounding... He was there sounding the alarm, and, and he is just like our forebears fight from the grave for liberty with their statements and the Second Amendment they laid down. Charlton Heston is, uh, like an El Cid, strapped dead on the horse out there ter terrifying the enemy. Yep, and here's the beauty. Charlton Heston would be more than proud to cause much anguish and insanity in the, in the soulless vacuum of Jim Carrey's brain, or his, 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 his skull. Charlton Heston is like you and I, Alex, only he's better. And he is just giddy with joy that he has inspired Jim Carrey to become even dumber than dumb and to be just this toxic source of indecency and mean spirit and hate. Charlton Heston isn't even alive, and he he caused Jim Carrey to expose his soullessness. So don't underestimate in the culture war, more important than uh, the, the, the lie of bowling for Columbine by, by Michael No Hygiene Moore and Nancy No Soul Pelosi and Diane, I've got a gun, but you don't get to have one, Feinstein. I mean, the, the list goes on of just hypocritical, brain-dead, subhuman punks. Or, not to mention, Alex, the vice president of the United States recommending felonies live on TV. <laughs> you you, you got to be kidding me, Alex, again. If you and I were to sit down with all the greatest minds on earth, the most clever, educated, witty, brilliant minds on earth, we couldn't design an enemy that looks more ridiculous than Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, Joe Biden, Barack Obama, Eric Holder, Jim Carrey, Michael Moore, odd nauseam. So yes, it is hurtful and it does inspire righteous indignation. And we should be angry, but we should also take a deep breath and go, hey, Jim, do it again, because you're distancing yourself further every time you open your in imbecilic mouth, surrounded by your armed security details, demanding that the rest of us don't get to have any security. So, Alex, I know it hurts and it's ugly, but you know what? I think in, the, in, in Nuremberg, 1938... We got there late, but when we finally got there, we made those subhuman Nazi brown shirt punks walk through Auschwitz and look what they caused. Look what they did. And this Jim Carrey moment is a mirror that we can show somebody, hopefully soon, that these people enhance crime. They encourage crime, they, they facilitate and, and guarantee more innocent, dead citizens. Sure. Because they're Well, that's it. Create. They know, uh, Ted Nugent joining us, they know crimes drop 49% violent crime, FBI statistics since 1991. As the guns go up, the crime goes down. They know that. So it is a criminal instinct of hypocrisy to want to dominate us because they're collectivist but end up getting our banker bailout money. They are just lawless parasites. Michael Moore, all of them, they know exactly. Uh, Diane Feinstein, she's got her own gun. She's got her own security detail. They have this, this, this I'll say it, criminal instinct to, dis to, to disarm us. Absolutely. Well, you, I mean, do we need any more evidence than the number one cop in the, in the free world running guns to Mexican drug gangs? Are you kidding me? Again, we couldn't write a Planet of the Apes meets One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest by Alfred E. Newman that's dumber than this scenario. And they get away with it. That's, they, see, that's why I got so mad by the video, and we're going to break here, but I want to get your take on this, that they are so pathetic. That's why it made me so mad. It was nauseating how stupid they are and how ridiculous. But then we're, 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 they're, they're still taking over. There's these, there's these idiots everywhere that think, think that's funny. Well, number one, Alex, today our job, as always, get everybody within earshot. Join the NRA. Increase your membership in the NRA. And here's the most important one. Give NRA memberships to everyone.
everybody you know. There's certainly a birthday, a graduation, an anniversary, some type of celebration, or just somebody that you admire, or an anti-gunner that you debate. Get them a membership in the NRA. They will read the Armed Citizen in the magazine. Just stay there and make Ted Nugent uh, President Pro Tem. Stay there. We'll be right tednugent.com is an amazing website and has a lot of uh, just 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 really cutting edge information on it when it comes to, uh, to the fight for liberty and if we can go back to that phone conversation this morning uh, ted again ted nugent uh, with us right now to the points you were making because you were so focused it was really focused anger and you were talking about the fact this is a war because, I mean, these collectivists, they don't want to just go to the Second Amendment. They want to expunge everything. I mean, they are literally taking over. And uh, the problem is so many of the Republicans are part of this as well. I think everybody who loves liberty needs to get really aggressive. Uh, so uh, I think it's a change in our guts. And you talked about just knowing we're right, Ted Nugent. Well, again, you know, the term self-evident truth isn't shouted often enough from the mountaintops of our daily lives, Alex. So we, again, we salute you for doing that. And we salute everybody out there. And again, I constantly reference the curse of apathy, the self-inflicted suicide of disconnected sheep in America. But again, only the guilty need to feel guilty. Some guys go, oh, I'm not a sheep, I'm involved. Well, then I'm not talking about you, pal. But we know sheep. We all have sheep in our lives. We know someone who shrugs their shoulder and goes, yeah, I believe in uh, the Second Amendment, but there's no reason we should own a machine gun, you know what I mean? We need to take these people and fix them and get rid of the self-inflicted curse of apathy because the term self-evident truth, what you rail about, the, the culture war in our face, the fact that a Chicago gangster, a manipulating acorn, communist hanging out with deceitful scam artist Barack Obama has weaseled his way into the White House, if that's not an indicator that too many Americans are sound asleep, then I really don't know what else I can tell you. But we know it to be true, but the answers are not mysterious. The remedy is not mysterious. This isn't rocket scientists. An experiment in self-government is in our guts. It's in our soul. It's the most powerful instinct to pursue your individual happiness, to know that God gave us each an individual right, as outlined succinctly and eloquently and for the first time in the history of mankind, in the U.S. Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence. My God, we've got to communicate with this to our elected officials. And again, I'm going to repeat this till I blow up. NRA memberships, there aren't enough of them. The most powerful sucker punch into the solar plexus of the Nancy Pelosi and Feinsteins and Michael Moore and Jim Carrey's of the world is numbers, NRA memberships. Exactly, exactly. Just to back you up, uh, Bloomberg has now raised $14 million off the dead kids at Sandy Hook, the victim disarmament zone that he helped nationwide set up. So if anybody's guilty, it's him. He's trying to collectively make us guilty. He raised $14 million to run around and pay off police chiefs and local governments to come out against guns. And we have to take it personal when these people do this. We have to give money to the NRA and Gun Owners of America and your state gun groups. Folks, you've got to give time, energy. You've got to support alternative media platforms, libertarian, true conservative. What about this? What about how Homeland Security is now buying billions of bullets, armored vehicles, and saying the number one terror threat is gun owners, conservatives, libertarians. I mean, talk about twilight zone, outer limits. We now know that, that, that they are taking over Homeland Security as another branch of the military. It's become the fifth branch trying to point it at us. The curse of apathy and the, the, the political correct scourge of denial. You mean, what you just mentioned, Alex, I, you know, I'm just a guitar player. I never went to college. I was too busy learning stuff. You know what I mean? Me too. I'm a pragmatist. I'm a utilitarian. I, I, I cut my own lawn. I change my own oil. I gut my own deer. I butcher my own carcasses. I, I breed my own wife, and I play my own music. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> just a, I'm just an independent. I'm, I, I'm a throwback to rugged individualism. And again, I've been clean and sober for 64 years, and if you look at my family, if you look at my incredible wife, if people want to have the time of their life, I don't know what you do, Google Shemaine Nugent Zumba, or, or, or my band, my crew, my kids, my brothers, my sister, my friends, my, my, my production, everybody around 
You are electrically alive, just breathing in life, and are successful and dynamic because you're tied in to your God-given instincts. And these collectivists are a bunch of sacks and piles of stinking dog crap. I'm sorry, that's what they are, and they want to make us like them. They're subhumans. I mean, I, literally, they're as evil as evil gets, so we can sit here and go, so, so you're not aware? Mr. Neighbor, Mr. Coworker, someone at church and school, so you're not aware that the, the homeland, the, the homeland security, the TSA, the D. Stay there, Ted the Nugent. DOJ. Ted Nugent, straight ahead. TedNugent.com. He's on fire. Ted Nugent is with us, and the more I get to know Ted Nugent, obviously I've known him for years. He's been coming on the show for probably 15 years, but the more I really get to know him, I mean, he is such a patriot. And you notice as things get more hardcore, he gets more hardcore. And I wanted to talk to him about how to beat these people. We're going to get to the fun of guns after we cover the more serious topics in a moment. It's time to get aggressive, 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 and support TedNugent.com. The globalist, the New World Order types love to act like we're all alone, that we don't have any power, that, that we're weirdos. At the end of the Charlton Heston demonization video where they say he killed the kids, God hates him, he's going to hell, he's a psycho, he's scum, he blows his foot off. At the end of uh, the attempted defaming that falls flat on its face by the the, the little scrofulous creature, Jim Carrey, and his masters, at the end of the whole video, you realize that these people are just pathetic and that all they've done is give us another tool to show what scum they are. But we are in a culture war, and at the end of the video, they all laugh at Charlton Heston and laugh at gun owners, and you're supposed to feel like you're alone at the end. Uh, you're, you're supposed to feel like, as, as there's blood all over uh, Charlton Heston, you're supposed to feel like you're a moron and because this scum laughed at you. That's all peer pressure manipulation. These people are the scum, and they really are the degenerate scum. And it's time to really get in their face and stop being nice about it. I mean, Ted, I think it's time to go all the way. It's time to triple and re-quadruple down. They tell us be nice. That's the way to win arguments. This is our enemy telling us this. Uh, what do you say about really getting aggressive? Then get into DHS, uh, get into still touring, getting bigger every day, the, the wake up that's happening. I want to get into Uncle Ted's advice in this war. Ted Nugent, you've got the floor. Well, Alex, when you recommend getting more aggressive, surely you've seen the YouTube video of me holding up a bunch of drum-fed AR-15s on stage and telling Nancy Pelosi, then-Senator Barack Obama, Barbara Bach, oh, yes. Diane Feinstein, and all to suck on my machine guns. Should I get more aggressive than that? No, I think, no, no, I'm telling, I'm not telling you that. I'm telling the, the public. <laughs> but I do believe that I may be the only guy on the planet who's got a couple notches up the aggressive chart from Alex. Oh, no, no, no. Let me be clear. I agree with you. I, I'm telling the audience I, I think know, it's time to get aggressive. What do you I, say I, I then? I just thought I'd make sure if, if people listening right now to us, Alex, has, haven't Googled my name lately, get yourself some popcorn and a couple of big gulps. <laughs> You're right. And Google Ted Nugent and watch me drive the liberals that's what I do sometimes on Saturday nights. I literally do. Go watch your latest YouTube. I mean, it's just his... And by the way, Alex, I have, my wife will tell you, I never in my life have woke up in the morning, rubbed my hands together, got a wild eye look in my face and gone, what can I do to drive liberals batty? I've never given it a thought. Swear to God, my instincts... Exactly. ...to stand up for truth, logic, the logic and pragmatism that brings independent quality of life, and I celebrate and promote those things. I started promoting, never defending. I have never defended the Second Amendment or backstraps. I've never defended anything. I promote and celebrate all good things, self-evident truth, logic, goodwill, decency, and the American way. And I found out as early as 1965, 1966, the beatniks were morphing into the hippies, and they hated me. And I, I sat back for a minute, and I go, you hate me because I believe in self-defense and I eat venison? Are you kidding me? But here's the bottom line. I would love to get... Pelosi and Boxer and Feinstein and Michael Moore and Jim Carrey and Bill Maher and Pierce Morgan, I'd like them to get on film and admit, how much dope have you smoking? 
how many mind alter and I'm not alleging they have, allegedly they talk and conduct themselves like cesspools of mind altering drugs. And I bet you if you got everybody that hates Ted Nugent and Alex Jones and the NRA and freedom in America, if you got all of them to take some truth serum and look in the camera and admit how much mind-altering substance abuse they've, they've subjected themselves to for how long, no one would be surprised that they are Timothy Leary run amok. And that's what you can expect from those kind of people. When you have intentionally poisoned and destroyed your brain, you can come out with a video like Jim Carrey has. Well, let me throw this at you briefly and then get into all those other topics we talked about during the break. Again, Ted Nugent's our guest. If you just tuned in and he's on fire today after they've tried to desecrate and demonize Charlton Heston, I believe it will, will blow up in their face. Buzz Bissinger was on uh, the Piers Morgan show a few days after I was on there, and he said, you know, we ought to get him in here and shoot him and then the ambassador's daughter, Huntsman's daughter, and Morgan agree and say, yeah, I'll put on a police uniform, and they fetishize that, real creepy, and, and we'll shoot Alex Jones. And then Buzz Bissinger has now come out and admitted he likes to buy $600,000 a year of women's clothing. And, 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 I mean, my whole issue is, what what is the point of this? I, I mean, you know, th this guy is, a, if I said kill him, which I'm not, I mean, that's like going out in the yard and stepping on dog crap. If I said, kill him, I would be arrested. He said, kill me, and then it's a joke. These people uh, fetishize killing us, and they're constantly talking about killing constitutionalists. There's, you know, there's so many examples of this with people like Alec Baldwin, you name it. I mean, well, that's why our instinct, you know, and again, if we go back to what made America great, we didn't meet the uh, British punks at Concord Bridge to make them tea and have, have a discussion. We blew their brains out. That's how you stop tyrants. That's how you stop King George. That's how you stop despots and, and emperors and punks that want to com control your life and, and oppress uh, freedom. You, you meet them at Concord Bridge and you blow their damn brains out. That's what we did in 1776 because we'd about had enough. And so when you made that statement on Pierce Morgan, I've seen the, the transcript. All I can say is, uh, hello, self-evident truth, common sense, and history is not up for discussion. It is what it is. But now in the culture war, it is important that we let them talk. We let them threaten our lives. We let them call the greatest, maybe one of the greatest heroes of the civil rights movement next to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and others that sacrificed so much, the freedom marchers and, and so many. Charlton Heston is the most revered and, and earned reputation icon and hero, Alex. So let Jim Carrey show his evil side. Let Jim Carrey lie. His entire video is a lie. And these punks like Bill Maher cannot separate their humor license, their creative humor license from the respect due to a great man like Charles Heston. So it's good that they take the bait, but we, the people, who still understand the foundation of the greatest quality of life in the history of the world is outlined in the Bill of Rights and the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Ten Commandments, the Golden Rule, those of us that are in the asset column of America, we still are running short of our responsibilities to educate, inspire, and, and prod everyone in our lives. There's an enormous army that could have won this last election, Alex, if all of us that knew the truth and knew the evidence, if we shared it and we asked and we really pushed harder to get our friends to join the NRA, to, to communicate with their elected officials, and to speak up. There's still too many sheep in America, and the sheep dogs need to educate them so we can reduce the wolves. You're right. And in closing on the point of Charlton Heston, before we get into solutions, uh, so many people that support liberty are just quiet and, uh, you know, they're sitting back and, 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 and they're waiting if the system pushes too much. And as Andrew Jackson said, don't fire till you see the whites of their eyes. You know, I understand the point of let the enemy run amok. That's what's discrediting. Polls show that people are more pro-gun now than they were just six months ago. Uh, there's a new CBS poll out. They're very upset that their whole hoax has failed. 
Uh, but at the same time, they've still got control of the government and the bureaucracy because they crave the control. How do we really get on the offense as individuals? I say go to city councils. I say get in the face of police chiefs that are anti-gun. I mean, I mean, my own police chief in Austin says, uh, you know, turn in your semi-autos, ban high-capacity clips, uh, ban gun shows. You can't buy your son a gun. No private sales. You don't need a semi-auto to protect yourself. Well, then how about the Austin police, who I know most of them are good people. How about you turn in your semi-autos? What a load of bull. What do you say to that? Well, he's obviously the illegitimate stepchild of Ann Richards. Um, that <laughs> still exists. I mean, Sheila Jackson Lee is alive and well in Texas. So we've got we've got anti freedom. We got hypocrites because I guarantee you that chief of police has a semi auto to protect his family. Alex, are you kidding me? Well, again, it's communication. Uh, I've been doing this forever. I think I was one of the first guys to find myself face to face with the whites of their eyes in the culture war back in the 1960s because the tip of that spear has always been gun rights and hunting rights, private property, hunting, conservation. We, the people, own those resources, not the king. So uh, i got to tell you, I'm going to put out a salute right now to Ranger Tess and, and Go-Kart and Steve and, 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 and so many guys at my talk back. Blood trails, I have... Thousands and thousands of people, not just from the United States, but Canada, Japan, Australia, Germany, England, Belgium, Sweden. I mean, people from all around the world who dream of, who crave and have the instinct to be independent and free. They come to TedNugent.com TalkBack. And a salute to them, because for every TalkBacker that you and I communicate with, they need to communicate with another dozen. And those dozen need to communicate with another dozen. That's how we win this culture war. We have not turned up the heat. We have not got aggressive enough, but we always have to be on the civil, polite, goodwill and decency side and let the Jim Carrey's spew their venom. Let them expose themselves for the haters and the freedom haters and the America haters that they are. And if we remain civil with the stats and statistics and evidence at our, at our fingertips and at the tip of our tongue, Alex, we will win. That's why I salute you. That's what you're doing. And everybody listening, they don't need to call Alex and say thank you. They need to call everybody else in their lives and get them going. You're right. Let's get into solutions. Talk about, the, because you got cut off by the break, the DHS situation. It's admitting there's an armed buildup uh, that they're trying to create this new domestic security force pointed at the American people. But then I want to hear about the Delta Force and SEALs and people you know. You were telling me off air how incredibly awake they're getting. And then let's talk about let's talk about solutions. The gun culture they're so afraid of that's spreading, uh, going and, 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 and literally getting somebody into guns, that one person uh, after another, that's how we're truly going to win. And you see it happening all across this country. Yeah, it's like your chief of police in Austin, isn't, it, isn't that a heartbreaker? that a Texas law enforcement officer sides with Nancy Pelosi? I mean, are, are you kidding me? So what did he do, pee at the wall of the Alamo like Ozzy Osbourne? I, I, I'm just <laughs> heartbroken because I know a bunch of those Austin cops. But here's the final overview. I, you know, I'm a lucky guy. I get to hang and barbecue and hunt and train with the, the greatest commando hero warriors that ever lived. I mean, I am so humble, I'm surprised I can even grovel at their feet. Delta Force, Navy SEALs, uh, the, the Special Ops, uh, the, the, the Army Rangers, SWAT commanders, and, and heroes of law enforcement and military all across this land. I held the hand of Sergeant Todd Baldy, who happened to be from Austin, Alex. I held his hand over in Iraq. He took an RPG center mass. I'll try not to cry on a radio show here. A young black man, 22 years old. RPG center mass, Alex. It was still in his guts. I stood there in his blood and I held his hand as he died. Wow. I don't need any more inspiration. He died because he swore an oath, Mr. Chief of Police to enforce, abide by, and fight for, and die for the U.S. Constitution. Do you think I need some punk, some dependent little whiny, soulless, doped up crybaby like Jim Carrey to give me direction on constitutional and Bill of Rights guaranteed God-given individual rights? Are you kidding me? 
So everybody close their eyes right now, unless you're driving, and think of Todd Balding as he bled to death and took this giant, ugly RPG rocket right in the guts. And he bled to death fighting for freedom and going after terrorists who attack Americans because of their voodoo, ala puke, Muslim insanity. And if that's not worth inspiring you to join the NRA, to communicate with your elected officials and do your duty as we the people, then I don't think there's any hope for you, and you probably ought to just move to Canada. Well, it really is disgusting that, that these people parade around. In fact, since you mentioned that, and I want to talk about uh, the terror and, and, and you know, the culture war, having fun, that is the way to defeat them. Obama says post-Assad Syria of Islamist extremism is nightmare scenario. Obama in Libya, in Syria, I'm not saying Gaddafi or, 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 or the guy in Syria are good guys, but they weren't offensively doing anything. They're putting real al-Qaeda out of Saudi Arabia over there and are now talking about our troops having to go in after Assad falls to fight them. I mean, what is going on with Obama openly funding real al-Qaeda? I don't know if you've seen the videos of them chopping Christians' heads off in Syria. I can't even believe this. It's like some uh, outer limits or, or, or some other dimension that, that it's in the news. Obama warns Syria could become enclave from extremism. Why is our government offensively with NATO now saying NATO is over our military? Our military spoken out against this, by the way. I'm sure you know that. Sure. What what is going on with that? What, what are your Do you hear anything from your military sources about about this craziness? The 10,000 missiles from Benghazi. Were they? Why did they kill the ambassador? I, they stood down. My inside sources that are in Army intelligence say Obama wanted him dead. It was the Benghazi security force that was Al Qaeda that came over and killed him. I mean, it's just what is going on with Obama? I mean, boy, where do you begin to answer that question? Here's a guy that was born to communists, raised by communists, educated by communists, preached to by America hating communists. I mean. Who hasn't studied where this acorn Chicago gangster scammer came from? But that's what I was talking about, the Department of Homeland Security, which, by the way, Alex, you're on the phone with the czar of Homeland Security. My <laughs> homeland is secure. Know that. But the, 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 the domestic agencies, uh, from the IRS to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife to the Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, and DEA, and ATF, and FBI, and, it, and remember, a lot of those people, I still think the majority of those agents are great patriots and great men and women, and I, I hang the future of America on the nail of truth that they have expressed to me that they will not enforce illegal anti-constitutional orders from above. That is the great hope. But that they're purchasing all this firepower and, and armored vehicles, who doesn't know this? Who doesn't identify this as an illegal act by the government who is so corrupt, so out of control? Thank God for Ted Cruz and, and Rand Paul and Ron Paul and Governor Perry and, and, and Greg Abbott and, and, and Steve Stockman and Bill Flores and, and so many patriots that are standing up and, and and, and, but that's, that's the new GOP that we the people have prodded with the we the people pulse. When you extract the we the people pulse from politics, you will get we the people. I give you Barack Hussein Obama. I think they're gearing up. Uh, what do you think is going on with the bullets? Are they trying to just dry up the, the, the bullet supply? Well, they certainly have succeeded at that. I started my own Ted Nugent line of ammo here last year, and it's like everything else you find on the shelf nowadays, if you can find any. It's state-of-the-art stuff. But we literally can't get my pallets of ammo off the truck. People are buying them in the parking lot before they even get to the shelves, which, you know, on a consumer side, I'm, 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 I'm gleeful of. And the, the ammo industry, the firearms industry, is literally having a consumer orgy like never before, which is a very powerful statement from we the people that we smell what you're doing, Obama, and we're gearing up, too. And a little don't tread on me reminder seems to be appropriate right now. So there's no question what's going on going on, the deceit, the scam, the criminality, the Benghazi, the fast and furious, sending F-16s to, to, to Egypt. I mean, you've got to be kidding me. This, this would make a stupid bird 
Hitchcock's movie that Alfred Hitchcock wouldn't produce because it's too stupid, but it's actually happening. But that's what frustrates me. That's why I got so sick. I'm going to be honest. I, I came in last night from work, you know, being an evil American. I got home about nine. And she said, what is wrong with you? And I just, my kids all came up and they were around me and uh, you know, 10 down to age five and they're, what's wrong, dad? And I just said, I don't want to talk about it. And then I couldn't, I got so, it was, it was past anger. It was the shame that we allow this scum to walk all over us and that, and that, and that this country has allowed pathetic filth and authoritarians to even call themselves liberal. Thomas Jefferson was a liberal. They're not liberals. And it just made me reaffirm that I am going to redouble 110%, and I'm coming after these people. Now, what do you think about ways to go after, legally and lawfully, to go after uh, Kerry and, and, and all these globalists? How do we really get aggressive? Boycott? What do we do? Well, you know, I... I yeah. I have such a, if you can bear with me, I literally have the answer, the perfect answer. Ted Cruz didn't sprout out of the ground and just show up. I communicated with him. Texans who cared communicated with him. With him. We enthused him. We supported him. Now he represents us. And did you see the beauty, the perfection of we the people when Ted that's right. We backed him. We backed him. So we take over. And that's what even the Republican establishment is scared of real constitutional libertarian uh, campaign for liberty people. Absolutely. But that's why Ted Cruz so riled up Feinstein, because he represented the common sense pulse of logic, freedom loving Americans. And every state needs to do that. And there's a lot of states that do do that. Arizona, uh, South Dakota, uh, certainly Texas is the master of it. Uh, Wisconsin has done great things with what they've done with Scott Walker up there. And in, in his own way, even though Christie's only a solid two on the scale of ten, he sure beats the negative eight of the past governors of that state in New Jersey. But we the people, where we don't demand representation based on the Constitution and our common sense, where we don't demand it, we will get the Pelosi's and the Feinstein's and the Bloomberg's and the Cuomo's and the subhuman freedom haters that are infesting this corrupt government right now. So the answer is activism, activism, activism. Always polite. Exactly. Always firm. But never, ever give up. Well, here's an example. DrudgeReport.com in the last year has been taking our stories and putting them out about the billion bullets, the 1.6, the 2 billion, the armored vehicles. And they just said it didn't exist, Politico and other uh, White House fronts. Now there's a 15-member congressional investigation starting. Uh, Congressman, it's my duty to get to the bottom of massive DHS ammo buy. It's now on Fox, CNN, everywhere. They're being caught lying. And there's an example of just taking action and the people talking to their Congress folks. We're now forcing this issue out. And we can do that everywhere when we just move against them. Tell us about the tour uh, in the last minute and a half and uh, how we win by having fun. Well, you know, having fun is all things shoot them up. I mean, every day in America, American families uh, celebrate the shooting sports and the Second Amendment uh, by spending millions of dollars and shooting millions of rounds of ammo. I mean, that's actually accurate, Alex. American families go out every week and shoot millions of rounds of ammo in training, competition, practice. And that builds the liberty defense. infrastructure. Listen, you've already done 55 minutes with us. This is a one-minute break. Can you come back and finish that thought for two minutes, Ted? My you got pleasure. I want to really get on the offense and really go after them. And if everybody would join state and, and, and national gun groups like the NRA and others, if everybody would go to their state houses and get aggressive, we would route these people. We're, in fact, Ted Nugent, in closing, you're talking about winning and also having fun. Uh, don't you think that, that, that they've jumped the shark here and that if we double down, we can actually have an offense that could really, once and for all, defeat the collectivist? Yeah, it almost took, in fact, not almost, it has taken this extreme attack on our individual freedoms by Barack Obama and all his gangster punk friends out there to wake a lot of Americans up, buying more firearms, more ammo than ever in recorded history of planet Earth. That's a great sign. But don't underestimate the importance. I use the term cleanse my soul, Alex. I get up in the tree with my bow and arrow. I train with these heroes of the military that have sacrificed their arms and their legs. And we shoot machine guns from helicopters and kill hogs. And we barbecue and we fish. So never underestimate the importance of getting away from the battle. As long as you've done the battle to the best of your ability,
credibility and signed up new members of the NRA, Gun Owners of America. You've communicated with your elected officials, and you've kind of educated slash chastised your friends who are not engaged. But then get out with your family and invite some new shooters. Take that 22 with ears and eyes and hearing protection and eye protection and introduce some new shooters. I have attended Nugent Camp for Kids Charity for 25 years, and we have graduated over 15,000 young Americans into the shooting sports for safe, proper Beautiful. gun handling. That drives the enemy berserk. That's how you cleanse your soul while you're winning the war, having the time of your life. No, you're right. We all need to fight hard and then play hard. Uh, the, the Black Power Tour, uh, uh, in closing, tell us tell us about that. That really upset the system, uh, that, that your inspiration was black rock and rollers. It also upsets them that Charlton Heston was such a humanitarian in the civil rights movement. Well, my, uh, all the good music in the world comes from black artists, from the Howlin' Wolf and Muddy Waters into Bo Diddley and Chuck Berry and Little Richard and James Brown and Wilson Pickett and Sam and Dave and the Motown Punk Brothers. So my incredible band, the, the greatest rock and roll rhythm and blues band in the world, Greg Smith and Mick Brown and Derek St. Holmes, we're hitting the road this year, starting next month with REO and Sticks, and we're going out all summer before the hunting season starts. But we're going to play a tribute, as we always have for 50 years, to those black American heroes that have inspired every piece of killer music in the history of mankind. And it's called Black Power because the black artists showed us the way musically and emotionally and that spirit and that uppity ferocity. So we should take that and use it. You can use Stranglehold as the ultimate soundtrack for, for freedom and defiance. And I want to thank everybody for making our Spirit of the Wild show the number one show on Outdoor Channel and our Wanted Dead or Alive show the number one show on Sportsman Channel. But I'm keeping at it. I'm turning up the heat. And we need to get more aggressive and need to win this culture war ASAP. Well, look at how you're, you know, all these hit shows on Discovery, they're trying to cancel them, even though they're hits, because they know we're winning the culture war. I see this whole attack as desperate flailing. It is desperate flailing, but that's going to backfire on Jim Carrey's going to backfire. Michael Moore's backfiring. I believe, Nancy, you don't need to read this. You need to sign it. Pelosi is a backfire in itself. So we need to take advantage of the uh, indecency, the wow. hate from the other side. We need to express it. Always express it calmly. If you're going to call your senator, have a piece of paper with the, the main two points you want to Absolutely. Make. Ted Nugent.com. Ted, thank you for giving such an eloquent defense of... Uh, Charlton Heston, not that he needed it, you're right, but God bless you, and we'll talk to you again very soon. Folks, Ted Nugent. Godspeed, Alex. You too. Goodbye. Well, let, me, let me put it in uh, official CNN Piers Morgan yes. interview term. Shall I? Yes. My limey friend? Yes. Anybody that wants to disarm me can drop dead. Anybody that wants to make me unarmed and helpless, mm -hmm. people that want to literally create the proven places where more innocents are killed, called gun-free zones, mm -hmm. we're going to beat you. We're going to vote the... you out of office yes. or suck on my machine gun. Yes, but you take, can take it whichever much way you as want. I'd love to. I think we have to thank God that he sent Barack Obama because this guy is so dis dis destined to destroy everything good about America. His policies, his scam, his lying, his deceit, his state of the union, his campaigning. Smart people who love to hear flowery, desirable speech are starting to realize the guy's a scam artist. And he is so arrogant in his scamming that it's become very apparent now.